This right here is P.K. Subban. And back in 2017, not only did P.K. Subban set records due to his center ice slap shots. Long drive, it scores! P.K. Subban from center ice! Not only did he change history from a center ice game winning goal, no, but this man was also involved in the most controversial, game breaking, Stanley Cup final missed call I have ever seen. The brand new McDavid Collector's Box has just hit the stores, or you have great odds of pulling a McDavid the Cup Auto, or perhaps a 1516 Series 1 tin, which keep in mind sells for about 600 bucks. The same tin, you could potentially pull a McDavid Young Guns Rookie. Link is down below. The other day, the NHL would post the heat map, which showed the top scores from each location on the ice. Zach Hyman has mastered the art of in-close scoring. The man's a pest and routinely scores goals from his net front presence via deflections or rebounds. The Leon Drysaddle has mastered the impossible angle goal. Over the line, five on five. Drysaddle, what timer score from an impossible angle? He is literally behind the net. Like, what? It doesn't even make sense. But something is interesting about this graphic. If we take a look behind the offensive blue line, Brock Besser currently leads the league with two goals. Huh. Interesting. Well, you know what? Not really, as both of these goals were on empty nets, as it has become very common to see players risk an icing, but they shoot for an empty net from center ice, if not their own zone. Why? Because players have never been so accurate and skilled. And this right here made me think, one of the most common plays in hockey at any level is the classic dump and change. A player initiates a line change by getting the puck in deep. Pucks in deep, boys. Colorado Hospital with a gerbil inside your anal cavity. Well, you gotta get it out, right? Uh, you gotta clear your own zone. Most of the time, they float the puck into the offensive zone. But at the same time, we are now in an era where most players can launch bombs from a distance. We are talking about 170 pound Elias Pettersson winning the hardest shot competition, bombs. Which begs the question if this play is so common, instead of floating a puck into the opposition zone for a line change, why not shoot to score? Here's as there is little to no risk on this play. And well, back in the 2010s, PK Subban would revolutionize this strategy. On this graphic, we have the heat map to where PK Subban took his shots in the 2012 season. And if we look right here, Subban took 6% of his shots from center ice. And keep in mind, the league average year after year sits between 1 and 2%. However, as Subban's career progressed, and my goodness, I kid you not, this strategy became so common for Subban that he would eventually take a whopping 12% of his shots from center ice. This man took 600% more shots from center ice than the league average. Absurd. Not only that, if we take a look at this graphic, True Doughty leads the NHL this season with 9 point shot goals. But to score these goals, much like most NHL defensemen, Doughty sneaks into the slot, gets close to the high circles, and blasts home a one-timer. Whereas, if we take a look at how Subban scored, this man was not only routinely scoring goals from the point, but he was scoring goals where part of his body, if not his whole body, was past the blue line into the center ice. In today's game, this is not a common strategy. Strategy. But why not? I can see this as the NHL's version of a three-pointer. But okay, Subban shoots from distance, we get it. No, this is where things get absurd. Because in the 2016 offseason, we would see one of the biggest what-if trades in league history. As the Oilers and Canadians were one discussion away from sending P.K. Subban to Edmonton. Which, to be honest, wasn't a bad idea. The Oilers had just drafted McDavid and were desperately looking for that number one defenseman. But the price for Subban was outrageous, as it was reported that the Oilers trade package was surrounding Leon Dreisaitl, the 2016 fourth overall pick, and either Darnell Nurse or Oscar Clefbaum. And keep in mind, at this point, Dreisaitl had not yet broken out into that superstar. And as for Subban, I don't know what has happened to make fans think he wasn't one of the top defensemen in the league, but let's not forget that P.K. Subban was a beast in his prime. This afternoon, Subban scores! Put Ray Subban out of the box and into the play. He'll come around. Subban, wait, scores! 
Okay, he won the draw with help from a winger. Here's Subban with a shot. He scores! Not to mention that when this deal almost took place, P.K. Subban had just won a Norris trophy and would finish top three in Norris voting three times. So there's a reality where Subban wins three Norris trophies, which would rank him fifth of all time. Not to mention he would make my favorite hit of all time. Tech handling. There was Subban as he picked up his head to go around. How can you not love this? But thank goodness Peter Shirelli didn't do Peter Shirelli things, and Edmonton would nix the trade at the last second, and instead opt to trade Taylor Hall for Adam Larson, which is a whole other debacle that we won't get into. And as a result, Montreal would trade P.K. Subban for Shea Weber. And now with the Predators, we would see multiple game-breaking incidents. Nashville this season saw a lot of adversity, as this year, the Predators had an up-and-down season. Yes, their defense was elite, in fact, Zuban would finish third in Norris voting, but they were lacking that number one offensive superstar. And as a result, they were on the bubble of a playoff spot for the entirety of the season. Meaning, that one extra loss could have been the difference between making playoffs and getting sent home packing. And in a matchup against the Senators, we would see P.K. Subban do P.K. Subban things. Now Subban tees it up, finds the lane, it's tipped in! As the Preds would cycle the puck, get the puck back to Subban, where this man would score a goal where majority of his body was at center ice. And Subban would do this several times in Nashville. Like seriously, look at this clip from later in 2017. Subban trying to catch the Canucks in a change and he scored! P.K. Subban from way downtown! In a matchup against the Canucks, Subban would retreat the puck in his own zone, where he would notice that the Canucks were making a slow line change, where he would then launch a cannon from center ice, where he would score another game winner. And he would do this again by scoring from behind his own goalie on an empty net. Meaning that these P.K. Subban goals, combined with this Tampa Bay game winner, was the difference between making playoffs and getting sent home packing. And this wasn't just your run-of-the-mill average playoff run. No, this was a classic underdog run. In the first round, the Predators would take out their brooms, where they would sweep the Blackhawks. And this shocking upset would basically put an end to the Blackhawks dynasty. And after this season, they would start a rebuild. In the second round, they would upset the Blues 4-2. And in the conference finals, they would defeat the Anaheim Ducks, crushing the Stanley Cup hopes of Ryan Kessler and Getzloff. So in a season, where they were the last team to make the playoffs. This underdog team would make it to the Stanley Cup Finals. And in this series, we would see what has to be the single worst missed call in NHL history. After four games, the series was tied 2-2. Two to two. Pittsburgh would take Game 5. And in Game 6, we would see the incident. To start the second period in a scoreless game, Philip Forsberg would drive to the net and handcuff Tristan Yari with a shot. Where? <laughs> The puck would squeak out of his armpit, Sissons would pounce on the loose puck to score. Except, the official on the ice who didn't have a good angle, thought that Pittsburgh had possession, and prematurely blow the whistle. Thus, the goal was waved off. We are in the Stanley Cup Finals. This missed call was the difference between a Stanley Cup and getting sent home packing. And in the dying moments of the third period, Pittsburgh would score. Score again on an empty netter to take home the Stanley Cup. This game should have been 1-0 Predators, with one minute remaining in the game. But instead, their Stanley Cup hopes were stolen, where Nashville has still yet to win a cup. And funny enough, the story doesn't stop here. Because back in 2021, the Montreal Canadiens were also the last team to make it to the playoffs, where Shea Weber would lead the Habs to an underdog run to the Stanley Cup Finals, where they too would lose in Game 6. As it is fascinating how one trade, one goal, can single-handedly cause a massive ripple effect. And with that, what is the best example of a history-changing moment you can think of? Comment down below. The McDavid Collector's Box is still in stock, Check it out down below. I've been sick all week, so sorry if I seem a little, a little stuffy. But as always, thanks for watching.